All right, this uh, video is on uh, things you can do with your page setup in uh, Microsoft Excel. Now, I'm just going to go back to the home ribbon here. And it's not on the home ribbon. It's in page layout, which makes sense. And you've got margins, orientation, size, print area. Uh, breaks, I think we get into later. They don't get into that right away. Uh, background. All right, so we're going to start with margins. So you've got... Uh, Last custom setting, normal, wide, narrow. You can go back to custom margins and you can set your margins pretty much anywhere that you'd like. And it's important that you know that and you've got the ability to print preview to see exactly what's going to look like. Um, the other thing you can do is you can get to the same menu from here, from page setup. This is at the old school way and go to margins and it's essentially the exact same menu. Um, page you can have portrait landscape, right? So straight up or sideways. You have those options to you. Um, here you have predetermined sizes. And if I was set up to a printer, I would probably have a custom option as well. And that would allow you to customize your sheet to be whatever size you want it to be. Uh, I've also used this. I've used the adjust to um, quite a bit in order to size things. And again, um, I'm just following the book and the book doesn't really get into um, too, too much as far as sizing. However, uh, I also know that if you go to view and page break preview, you can adjust where your pages will break from here. So if I had a bigger spreadsheet, I can stretch these lines to make sure that certain parts or elements uh, end up on page one as opposed to page two, etc. So we're probably going to get into that later, but for now we're getting into just basic page layout stuff. So it's important that you know where the margins can be changed, the fact that you can change your orientation. And next, um, I want to go into headers and footers. So I'm going to go back to page setup here, and this is where we get into headers and footers. And it is very much not like Microsoft Word. It, it really isn't. Um, First, you need to understand these sizes, these things right here, all right? So if you want a different header or footer for your odd and even pages, you would set it up here. If you want a different header and footer for your first page, um, you would set it here. Now, in Word, you almost always do this because your first page is some kind of a cover page. In Excel, Excel is not really something that people print nearly as often as they do Word. Uh, Excel lends better to the digital environment uh, an actual computer in your computer screen than it does to the paper world. But we, we do tend to print once in a while, just not as often. And typically you're, you don't have a cover page in Excel. So I, we don't tend to use different first page nearly as often. So when you're ready for your head and footer, you go custom header and they give you three predetermined areas in which you can put parts of your header. So you have the left section, the center section and the right section. And, uh, you're allowed, you're, you're able to uh, type whatever you want and then format it if you'd like to. You're able to put in uh, the page number that you happen to be on. Uh, and then if you wanted the number of pages, you can also have the number of pages. So I would probably, if I were to do that, I would then go of and then the number of pages so that that would make sense, right? And then um, you can put in the date, the time. Uh, you can put in the file path. Now, why the hell? Would you put in the file path? Well, uh, if you're going to print this out and you want people to know um, where it is that they can find this file, right, in anywhere in your network, that would come in very handy. I know for, if you're creating forms in Excel and you run out of forms and somebody's about to use the last one that's been printed out, well, it would it would behoove them to just go on your computer, find that, and 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 maybe print out some more, right? So. Um, that's why you would put the file path. You can put the file name, all right? And you can also put the sheet name somewhere in your header or footer, right? So that's very valuable stuff. So I can hit OK. And then if I go to print preview, it's going to look like that. And it's just telling me that it's one of one because there's only one page. So if you want to see what your headers and footers look like, you need to go to print preview. You're not going to see it on your regular sheet. Um, so back to here, for some strange reason, they want, uh, in the book and in the exam prep, uh, they want you to know that you can 
there is no bookmark feature in Excel, but they want you to know that if you want some kind of a bookmark feature, you can do that. So um, I'm going to delete this, right? That's how you delete a header or footer. And I'm going to insert a picture, okay? So I've got a certain picture in mind, so I'm going to work offline. I don't need to download it. So I'm going to use this as a bookmark. I want this to be in the background. And I guess the smartest way to do that is through headers and footers, believe it or not. Now, um, this picture is now going to show up on every single page. That's the idea behind using headers and footers is it will automatically be on every page. Uh, if you insert a picture and, and, and grayscale it or watermark it or, yeah, grayscale it, um, it, it's not going to be on every page. So this is a little shortcut in order to have that on every page. But before you do, you would need to go to picture here and instead of a regular color, I would wash it out, right? Wash out and then hit OK and then hit OK. And you can see a little bit back there that there's a there's a picture back there. And from here, you go to print preview to see how what's this going to look like. And that's what that's going to look like. OK. And if I had more pages, it would be on the back of all pages. Uh, not a, an important lesson, uh, not even something I'd ever use. However, it's in the manual. So I'm assuming they may test you on that. Don't know. But that's how you do that. Um, the other thing they want you to know is if you wanted words to show up on every sheet instead, you would then use um, WordArt and your WordArt feature. Again, WordArt's not something I use in, in Excel very often, but it's available. So you go to insert WordArt and you would choose whatever you'd like. And then, um, so we're trying to simulate a watermark is what we're trying to do here. And again, not something I find very practical, but they wanted me to cover it, so I'm covering it. So let's say watermark. And of course, we probably say like confidential or draft, right? In a sense that it's, this isn't the final copy, draft. And then you want to put that on every page. Uh, right now, the problem is it's over my words, right? And there's no ability to send it backwards or send behind text. So what I'd need to do is I would need to fill this with no fill right and then I might want to change the outline so that it's not nearly as as wide or broad right so that I can go like this and then maybe change the weight a little bit right so then it, it's kind of in the background and people can tell that it's a draft the only problem is you'd have to manually put that on all of your pages if you wanted it there Next is themes. Um, also something I don't use in Excel nearly as often as I do other stuff, but if you go to uh, home, it's not there. It's probably going to be in page layout. There we go. And then we have all these themes that you can choose from. All right, and they change the font. They change the size of the font. They may even change colors depending on what it is you've got on your sheet. It's actually changing the color of my my uh, word art in the background, if you'll notice. So you can pick one. And then, of course, if you want to, if you like this style, great. You can then change the colors to whatever theme that you, so you can change the theme color as well. So I can choose this custom color that I have for school. I like that. You can change the fonts, even though you just change the fonts with the theme. If you don't like that font, you can change it. You can also, okay, so those are the main things that you can change, right? And then if you wanted to, you can save that theme. And I believe now that should show up somewhere on your menu. Uh, I was hoping, we, oh, there it is, custom, right? So that's custom theme that I can now use in other documents. So that's how you can pick a theme do some mixing and matching, save a theme. If I wanted to change the theme on a sheet or a group of sheets, I can, using my control key, I can select week nine and week 11, and I believe I can change the theme from there. And now it seems to have change the theme on all of my workbooks. 
So if that didn't really give me what I wanted to do, I thought that you could probably just change the themes on some workbooks and not others, or some sheets and not others. But it appears as though when you change it, you change it for everything. Okay, so yes, if you do change the theme, it does change the theme for the entire workbook. So every sheet will be affected regardless of what it is you've got selected. So there you go, page margins, themes, and uh, two different ways of inserting watermark type-ish things into your workbook.